Welcome to Mixed Media Creations with me, Creative Katie, Karen Virchel. Follow me on Instagram at this address. See what I'm up to. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and select the option to be notified as soon as I upload a video. Today we have the first of five videos in the revamped and revisited Journaling by Fives. In this one, you're going to see me finish the first four pages. In front of you, in, we have my 20 pages that have gone through all five of the steps of Journaling by Fives, Revamped and Revisited. So what do you do now? You've gotten it to the point, you've got a focal point. Some pages, you know, are a little more composed and done. Some are, I don't know what to do with that. So what do you do? Now, in Shannon Green, who is the creator of the Journaling by Fellows process, she said, after you do all of these, you do free play. Now free play, you do finishing and you basically can repeat any and all of these until you know what is going to happen with that page. So instead of rotating through this, and I'm, I'm a little unclear about whether she says, okay, you go and do all 20 pages, you know, for each one, or you just add to each one. What I do is I just call it, you know, finishing. And what I want to do in this next series of videos is finish some of these pages. And so you get some of the basics of how to take it from this to a finished, completed page. Now I could say these are done. Slap a sentiment on here and pretty much call it done. And that's fine. I'm going to do a little bit more. Uh, different pages are going to require different things. Now, as I've looked through these, and I've looked through, you know, flipped through them at different times, what I did was think about quotes and um, what hits me, what strikes me. Um, you know, if I think, oh, you need more color down here, or the bird seems to be floating. Um, you know, so I would write those on the back of my page. You can put it on post-it notes as those ideas come to you. And at different times, you know, different pages spoke to me. I also went on to Pinterest and I would Google owl quotes and I would write down some of the quotes on here um, if I had these pages with me. If not, I just pinned it to my inspirational quote on my Pinterest board, which you're all welcome to go and check out my inspiration board. I love putting quotes onto page. So I know that all these pages are going to have some kind of inspirational quote on it. Now, so I kind of went through these and I'm going to start with ones that kind of speak to me. I know what quote I'm going to use or I know basically how I'm going to finish it. Um, and we'll go from there. And I thought if I did four in each video, that would be five additional videos for finishing. We'll see how, how we go um, in that. But it's, it's a good trick because some of the stuff that we do in the finishing stage, whether it's on the journaling by five pages or on a mixed media canvas or an art journaling page are going to be different. So I just picked this page, this page, um, I'm not sure, well, I think, I think this one, and I think one of the, the clock here, the watch at the back. So these, these are the four pages that I am going to do, you know, to start with. So I was telling you about the quotes that I have. So what I did is, 
you know, after I've written the quotes here and searched and kind of had some ideas, I just typed them out with and played around with some different fonts and, and sizes because every font, 32 of one font may be actually larger than 32 size on another font. So I just played around with that and then I just kind of cut them, cut some of them out. So I kind of picked quotes, what I think I might be using on these pages, but we'll see. So one of the things that I'm going to want to do, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, D does it need more color? And, and you know, I might add more color. I'm not sure just yet. I, I kind of like the little bits of white in there. Um, but one of the things that I like to do is just kind of edge around the outside of the page. Especially if I know, now if it's, you know, this page, I know black is going to go well, and I know that black is going to be in all of these, so. I'm just kind of putting that, and that kind of frames it a little bit, and gives me a different look. I may come back and do more. Um, this is a soft, it's Artist Loft um, brand, but I'll put a link to this in the video. It's, I just love using this. It's so quick and easy. And as you can see, I'm just kind of building up For the rest of the video, I am going to speed it up. It's going about three times. To do these four pages, it took me about an hour and 45 minutes. And there's a lot of repetition here for each page, you know, where I'm doing the same thing on each page. And while I think it's important that you see how each individual page is developed. I don't know that we need to have it in real time. So you can see, or hopefully you can see, how edging this in black using, you know, the woodless charcoal pencil like I'm using, or Stabilo All pencil, or acrylic paint, or ink, it kind of frames it. And instantly, you know, for me, it always gives me fresh ideas. Now, with this page, because it's more in the brown tones, I'm thinking the black is going to be a little stark. So I hesitate to do the black, but I also note that there's some white, little parts, bits and pieces here where I didn't get paint. So I can grab out the acrylic paint that I have, or what I found to use that works really well for filling in those small areas and highlighting and shading is my ink tense blocks. And, you know, if you've swatched them out, you can always, always, always match them to the colors that you have on the page. And in previous Journaling by Fives, I used my Intense Blocks a lot. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of supplies back then, but I did have my Intense Blocks, and I found them to be very, very versatile. And if you have Intense Blocks and want to learn how to use them more within mixed media, I have a whole series of videos and I will put an I card in the top right hand corner and you can go check out those videos. There's an awful lot of information and I apologize for the quality of those videos. They were amongst my very first uh, videos. So I'm just building up the color in certain areas. Now one of the reasons I chose to use the Inktense blocks here instead of the acrylic paint is because the ink tense blocks or if I was using watercolor it's a little more transparent and you're going you know it's not going to be as opaque as the um, acrylic paint might be and I like that effect that green at the top I wasn't sure I really liked it I liked a little bit because there's green in the tulips but it was just too stark. My eye kept going there and I don't want it to go to the edge of the page. So I just kind of muted it out, kind of pushed it back. 
As you're finishing um, these pages, certain things you're going to want to make pop and certain things you're in, in your background you're going to want to push back. And so, you know, it's kind of push, push and pull in there. However, as you're doing it, you honestly don't know where the page is going to take you. You know, every step you do gives you another idea and you get into that creative zone. So now that this page has more color, I'm pulling out the quote that I have selected. Now there's a little bit of gold there, so I thought, oh, I'm going to add a little bit more. Everything that you've done in this page in the first five steps of journaling by fives is going to nudge you to the next step, to something else. You know, if there's gold in there, you might want to bring out more gold. I want to bring out the texture there. And one of the ways is to put gold on or to put on a darker color. And I've, I've tried both with the paint. Now I'm trying um, to get that same effect or a little bit, bit different effect with my Distress Ink and the Ranger applicator. Any of the supplies that you see me using here, I will put a link to in the description box. And if they're not specifically listed, if you go to my influencer store, you will see pictures of them and that will make it so much easy, easier to find. One of the other things that um, you can do on the page is you can add the stenciling that you already, add to the stenciling that you already did. And here I, I grabbed out the same stencil and I'm applying more of the texture paste through the stencil. I want more of the, that swirl action. I really like it, and so I'm adding to it. So, you know, if you haven't started the process, remember that, that if, if at the end you get to the end, you want more of it, you can always, always, always go back and add it. So I'm trying out my quote, and now I'm getting out some paint and, because there's bigger areas and it's in and amongst the texture, I, I put the ink tense blocks aside and I grabbed out the paints that I used. And I'm just coloring in that texture paste. As much as possible matching to the patterns and the, the feeling that was developed in previous steps. And I like how the brown is making the page look richer and deeper. And so I, I want to put that on to the texture paste to bring, make it stand out. And then, of course, I'm adding the gold in there. It seems that these, these, these parts down below are a little flat. So I, instead of putting texture paste there, I am just stenciling on with the stencil. And that's one of the things that I like doing on my pages, using the same stencil and doing using it differently. So one who has parts of it have texture paste and parts of it don't. Now that I'm happy with the background, I want to make this bag of tulips pop. So on the side there, I have some brown acrylic paint and I am using the float technique or, you know, kind of my variation of it. I've, you know, it's definitely not textbook. And I'll put a link to my mixed media technique tag video where I teach how to do this. I'm using a, I think it's violet oxide here. It's kind of an orangey, browny kind of color. And I'm finding that the brown and that color work together. It's a perfect color combination. You don't always have to shade with black. You can shade with a color, you know, a darker color that matches what your background is. And so if you have, with acrylic paints, you have pretty much every color that you want, that you've used in your background. Intense blocks are also great for this. And for the longest time, that's what I use because they are mostly permanent when, when they're dry. And I won't have to worry about them getting reactivated. You can also get Stabilo All Pencils. They come in brown and green and blue as well. 
So use what you have and use what works best for you. So I'm back to shading and sometimes I'm going around the outer edge and at times I'm going on top of the magazine pictures. Now all these magazine pictures when they're collaged on they have a good coat of gel medium on them. And so I'm just, you know, highlighting or shading where I see fit in, in order to make these tulips pop off the background. Right now, like the tulips are very much the same color as the background. And by shading around them, that makes them stand out and brings them forward. So now just doing some splattering and splattering seems to unify the page. Now I have my sentiments here and I'm just edging the um, the papers. I've cut them down to size and eliminated as much white as I can. And as you can see with the fonts, I've played with two different fonts and mixed and matched them to get, you know, the kind of effect that you often get when you buy a stamp. This is let your joy burst forth like the flowers in spring. And I thought that was a beautiful quote that kind of goes with this, with the tulips and with the swirls that's kind of bursting forth there. So that's why I chose this particular quote. Because it's color covered in gel medium, uh, if I put something on there and I don't like it, I can very easily take it off with a wet um, baby wipe. So I've edged it with that violet oxide and now I'm just adding black and, and oftentimes you'll see me putting two colors on and that just makes it tie into the whole page. And I've used black in the splatter because there's black in the words. You typically want to have anything in more than one place on your page so that it kind of reads very cohesively. You know, and there's always that drawing time. You know, my hope is that you grab your pages and you put on my videos and you watch as I finish, finish these pages as you finish the pages. Finishing always takes a long time. Now I'm adding the black. Now that it doesn't seem so stark, now that my background is a little bit darker, the black doesn't seem quite so out of place. You know, sometimes it seems like, you know, we're undoing what we've already done, but often we don't, I don't know where I'm going to go. And you, you kind of make the best decisions you can at the time, and that leads you to the end result. I get out my fine liner bottles, which I absolutely love. This has black acrylic paint in it that I've thinned down to the right consistency, and that's just trial and error, no magic measurement. And I'm just kind of sketchily going around this to make it stand out a little bit. And it kind of melds those cut pieces of paper with the background a little bit more, makes it fit in. Doesn't look so much like I just glued it on top. And going around the edge. Just a bit of a close-up here of the wonderful texture and the colors. And, you know, hopefully you can see the benefits of the finishing that I did on this page. 
Moving on to the next page, I have this quote, every moment matters. And the quote goes really well with the clock. Uh, in, in retrospect, you know, hindsight's always 2020. I would have made the quote smaller. I would have actually also changed the orientation of this page when I looked back and viewed, you know, some of the options that I had. So here you see me using black acrylic paint and the float technique to make this watch pop. And as I apply one layer and then the next layer and the next layer, drying in between, hopefully you'll see how it really does stand out from the background a little bit more every time I add more, more another layer of shading. And quite honestly, when I'm speeding up, this is the biggest part of, of, a, of a lot of the finishing pages is the shading technique. But it is absolutely imperative. You know, and often I tell myself when I'm, you know, I put down a focal point or I have, have something in the background, I can bring that out with shading later or highlighting. And in these finishing videos, you're going to see me shade and highlight in some different ways with different colors as well. Now I chose to make these this the word here very big because I had this huge big space that I felt the need to use up. And it just looked too terribly stark on the background so I thought oh what if I mounted this on book paper? And it kind of has that gold because this is really old dictionary paper. And that didn't quite give me the pop that I wanted, the gold that I wanted. So then I decide, you know, I'm just going to paint some paper with gold paint and mount it on that. And maybe that's going to give me the pop. Remember, there is gold paint uh, scraped across the texture on that background. So again, everything that I've done before is guiding my decision making now. But I'd be lying if I, you know, represented myself as knowing exactly what I want to do. You know, sometimes it's trial and error. So that really didn't give me what I wanted. So then I decide I'm just going to paint these, the white was interfering. There was just too much white. So I painted the sentiment. Now I made this really difficult for myself because instead of using thicker paper, I used just regular copy paper and, you know, it would crinkle and it wouldn't, it, it just made it more difficult than it need be. You can definitely use just copy paper, but copy a paper that's a little thicker I have more success with and you don't end up fighting it so much. So I have the leftover um, gold paint and I already had scraped some of the gold on there but I want it more so that's what I'm adding to it. That's bringing out the texture and you know what? Giving the bling and I've got to have bling on my page. So I'm just using up leftover paint and putting it on, in this case, a coffee filter. And sometime in the future, you may see me using that coffee filter to create collage papers or a background. Now it's not standing out quite enough, so I'm edging this with black ink. You can tell the difference that little effort makes. You know, often, you know, people say, what should I do on my page? What should I do on my page? Edging and shading are so incredibly key. They, you know, take up very little ink or paint, but they, they really bang for buck. So now that I'm happy with how that looks, I've gotten rid of the white and I've, you know, made it gold and outlined it, shaded it. 
Now I'm just gluing it down with gel medium. Now my gel medium is matte finish. Now if I put the matte medium on top of the gold, understandably it's going to dull the shine. So I'm trying to avoid doing that because I want that shine. I think that gold is, is an important part of this page. Just using the ink to go around the edges. Now, because I painted on top of the letters, they dulled down and I want to bring that black back. So I'm thinning down the acrylic paint. It's just my Liquitex Basics and using a liner brush or a very small round brush, I'm not sure which here, I'm just painting over the letters. that's a totally personal choice. You could have left it the way it was if that's what you like. Now I grabbed my woodless charcoal pencil, but I could have used the float technique and I'm just going to darken around these letters shade and make it fit the page again. And hopefully you can see the difference that makes. If that's one thing, you know, as a beginner to learn the importance of this step. And page two is done. Now this owl page at the top, I'd use some of this paper. So I decided I'm gonna grab out the paper. Now right from the beginning, I think it was just the way the collage, that red collage piece that has stenciling on it, it always reminded me as a heart. So I decided I'm gonna cut out some hearts with that same paper that I used and kind of tie it in. It looks out of place, it just needed it in another place. So I cut out hearts and I cut out, I had that gold paper that I painted and I never used on that last page, ended up cutting out a heart out of it and using it on this page. And again, the quote, all owl you'll need is love, kind of tied in. Now for the most part here, I don't believe I added any color. I left the, the background the way it was with the little bits of white that were showing. I liked it, it kind of read well with the white that was in the owl. So here I'm taking this Stabilo Owl Pencil and going around the owl. It's just very difficult with the Stabilo or a watercolor pencil to do it when there's texture paste on there. Not impossible. Um, if you have intense blocks, you can just, you know, um, wet it out on the craft mat and then bring it in. And I'm just adding water and I, and I really want to encourage that black to go into the texture paste and extend. And again here you can see how going around the owl in the way that I am, it just makes it pop from the background and stand out. Shading is really important when you know your focal point is very similar in colors as your background.
I'm adding a lot of water because I want to get that drippage going through. I don't want this to look like a, a line around the owl, like I've outlined it with a felt pen. That That's not a look that I do very often at all. Nothing wrong with it. It's just, again, those that personal choice. So I've edged the hearts with black. And I'm pretty sure I did the same with the sentiment. I could have added more shading on, on the owl, the, on the actual magazine picture. I'm kind of mudding up the um, sentiment. It was reading too white, so I just kind of took some, um, some of the distress ink that I had and just rubbing it on it to make it kind of brown and, you know, just a little, just get it off white. Make sure it's not so pristine. I apologize. This is is off screen. I I zoom in to give you guys a, a close pick, and then I forget to zoom out. I get in, engrossed in the act of creating and not watching the screen. Putting those hearts there also gave the owl something to sit on. Otherwise, it was kind of just floating in midair. You know, it wasn't on a branch. It wasn't on anything. I mean, I, I thought about adding a branch. But I'm just going around with the Stabilo All Pencil and activating it. It gives a slightly different look than the charcoal. And here, you know, I've kind of done both. And that's okay. And sometimes you don't know how dark you want to go until other parts of the page are done as well. So you always reserve the right to go back and do it again or redo it or change it. More fine liner bottle work. And, you know, I'm being very deliberately sketchy when I use this. I'm not trying to be perfect because it's almost impossible. And I find, you know, I, it's something I've had to learn to accept the in, you know, using this to be low all pencil, you don't get the perfect look or when you're smudging charcoal pencil. I had to let go of that and, you know, now I can just enjoy it and giving it a dry in between. Always when you use the fine letter bottle, it, it takes a little longer to dry and it makes a real big mess if you don't take that time. So I'm just adding some dots and dashes around and that just further frames this page. You really can't see it. If I did a close up of it, you, you would. It actually looks like little feathers that remind me of that, uh, the feathers on the bird or the texture, the stenciling that I put through, the texture paste I put through the stencil, sorry. And we're on, I think this is the last page. And I printed off this quote with a black background and a white background. I wasn't sure which I wanted to do. And so quite often, that's what I'll do. I'll print it out in both and then I addition them on the page and sing. And in the one that I don't use goes in my stash. And, you know, when I'm doing an ATC or I'm doing a quick page or ICAD at another time, it's there to use. Many of the quotes aren't necessarily specific to one focal point. So I'm getting out my clear gesso 
and I'm putting a coat of clear gesso on here. Now the reason for this is I want the texture paste and the magazine picture and everything to take what I'm going to do next in a very similar way. And also it's a little bit of insurance because I'm gonna to try to do some stenciling over top of this and I'm not sure I'm gonna like what I see. With the coat of gesso on everything, I do have a few minutes to be able to remove the acrylic paint. So I had the idea that these flowers she's blowing, they should start here. And looking at this now, I'm thinking, you know, why didn't I like it? But I didn't like it, so as you can see, I'm erasing it and getting rid of it. Then I decided to darken the texture paste that was there to make those flowers kind of stand out a little bit more. Now the mag some of these magazine pictures, you know, you can see here they're wrinkled. They're not perfectly flat and, and you know, and that's okay. Then I decide, okay, if these are flowers and she's blowing them, Maybe they would have yellow centers or white centers. So I grab my fine liner bottle and I'm putting a drop of gold in the middle of it. Now there was a little bit of gold in the background already that I had, I think, stamped on with some lids in the stamping stage. So that was my tie-in to being able to introduce gold. Now if there wasn't gold on there already, I could have just used white maybe black. Again, it's a personal choice. Taking time out to dry this so I don't make it get a smudge. Now I'm using the Stabilo All Pencil and I'm tracing around the uh, focal images because I do want them to pop a little bit from the background a little more than they are It just looks here. It looks very very stark So I'm you know adding more water and kind of working it out a little bit And the only way you're going to get better at Shading whether it's using this to be all pencil whether it's using the acrylic float technique charcoal pencil is by doing it and so by doing the process of JB5 you've got 20 pages to practice on your skill level is going to go way up just simply because you've practiced you know one of the frustrations when you're starting out is you know things don't look that way or it doesn't work as well or as simply as what we see the YouTube videos showing but the difference between what they're doing and what we're doing is simply that they've got hours and hours and hours of practice time. You know, you have to, in order to get better in creating, you need to create. And you have to practice those skills. No, no supply is going to magically make that happen. You know, I thought, oh, if I get the Stabilo All Pencil, that will make my shading look better. No, it was just something else I had to learn. You know, get out pages, glue pages onto whatever kind of backgrounds. Practice shading around on magazine pages. Don't even cut it out. Practice doing it. Use different colors. And so during the finishing stage of the JB5, you're going to get lots of practice. So I'm adding gold around the edges and just gluing it down with gel medium. Now you could use Mod Podge, you could use a glue stick if that's what you have. Now, be careful. Right now, I know that most of what's in my background is permanent. I mean, have not used watercolors or sprays that are going to reactivate. If you do, when you use a gel medium or 
Mod Podge on top to glue things down, you may inadvertently reactivate what's underneath. And that might not give you the effect you're looking for. So just be aware of what you've used and, um, you know, you can spray it with a fixative beforehand to seal it and then avoid that problem. So I'm just using my fine liner bottle and outlining the quote. So there's two pages. And three. And four. See you with the next video.